He was an equal partner in a group of four that changed the map of the world. Known as Saban, he was the first non-Indian to cross the present states of Texas, New Mexico, and Arizona. He walked over 5,000 miles exploring the southern part of our country, and yet he is largely unknown. Saban was born around 1501 in the coastal city of Azmour in Morocco. After the Portuguese military retained control of the port, Saban was captured and sold to Andreas Dorantes in 1522. They both took part of the Navarrese expedition and five overloaded ships sailed from Spain to Santo Domingo. The Navarrese expedition would be a continuous disaster from start to final destruction. Humphrey Lo Narvaez and about 300 Spaniards sail into what's now Tampa Bay and they immediately begin to experience all kinds of difficulties. Snakes, hostile Indians, bad weather, etc., etc. And the result is that some of them decide to return to Cuba and a huge storm arrives which brings a Staben and three other Spaniards to the coast of Texas, near Victoria, Texas. Beginning in 1528, they somehow managed to survive and traverse the southwest over to what's now the state of Sinaloa in northwestern Mexico. And at that point, the Spaniards are very surprised to find them, and Esteban accompanies he and his other colleagues to Mexico City where they're treated as celebrities for their time. And at that particular time also the Viceroy of New Spain, as Mexico was called during its colonial period, asked Esteban if he would be willing to lead a party of Spaniards into what's now New Mexico with Fray Marcos to help find some wayward priests and other explorers, and of course also to find the seven cities of Cibola. The life of Saban is one of the most fascinating stories in American history. He was a slave like no other, strong, talented, and faithful. Determined to finish his job, he offered to lead the expedition to find the seven cities of gold. And by that, he blazed the trail that Coronado expedition will follow later. A statement apparently had a unique ability to communicate with his hands. He was the one who probably deserves the most credit because of his ability to convince local indigenous peoples that he had magical as well as medicinal powers with which he could help them. And of course, in return, prevent them from being cannibalized or killed. The statement generally receives credit as the first African to set foot in the Southwest. With, with the changing demographics of the United States and the interest in the Spanish background increasing, naturally somebody wanted to know who was the first European to set foot in the Southwest, who of course was Cabeza de Vaca, and then from there people would want to know who was the first African. And I would say this is what stimulated interest in a statement. Saban started his journey as a slave, and he ended as a hero. His story is full of possibilities. It could become a spectacular summer movie, a play, or an opera. Saban's story is an inspiring legacy that any immigrant can relate to, and from which every American needs to learn.